Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series and Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 and in this episode I have decided to refactor the Hammon system in light of data from the boilerplates and now we're building the real thing with an actual Mark 1 pod at the top of it and we've got two copies of the lander which doesn't have the heat shield but does have the landing legs and also doesn't have the parachutes, and then the spacecraft that's supposed to be the return vehicle, and also get them over, the, well, one Kerbal over there, and that is has the heat shield, but not the landing legs, of course, and it does have the parachutes. Uh, so two copies of each, and we will see those are, of course, very expensive. The point of using the boilerplate was so that it'd be cheaper. Uh, these are more expensive because it's an actual pod, and it'll be very costly to roll out. So basically it's more than a million that that'll cost us uh, if to actually launch all of those four. Um, now on the lander, I decided to finally use the RL-10 and I ponied up for the upgrade, the RL-10A3-3A, I think it is, or if it's A3-3, I don't remember, but whichever one of those it is, and uh, I, I even did the unprecedented thing of doing the R&D inside the vehicle assembly building, though. I don't like that. It doesn't give you much feedback on that. Uh, so if you don't know about that R&D option, we can't really light the engines on the pad per se uh, because you have to be in flight for it to get the data points. So it's not you can't do a pad test of the engine. Uh, there are ways around that that are undermined by the rollout cost situation, of course, but basically uh, the Hammond lander, um, I'll show you the R&D option in here. Uh, so using the RL10s and two RL10s on the Centaur stage as is traditional. And in fact, I tilted them so that if one goes out, there's a chance it can blow through the center of mass, you know. Uh, but there's an R&D option here. It's the RL10A-3-3, sorry. Uh, this um, research option, I've started it, and I don't know if it's any good or not. I don't think it's going to give us many data units. It's probably more expensive than it's worth, and I don't really see a way to track what's going on with it. Let me check outside. So here, no, I don't think there's anything here to track it either. So yeah, it is what it is. What is this? Palm Kim. Why are we spending 91 on integration there? Huh. I didn't realize we had any facility there. What's that about? Hmm. Somebody's been pilfering our money, it seems. Okay. Well, anyway... Uh, but first, before all that, we have one more series launch to go with this Piper C, and then we're going to try once again to fulfill the station, space station contract with the Station Alpha and Valiant D, and then we'll build the Hammonds and try that out. And I've got a backup Station Alpha just in case here. Uh, but yep, series first. Okay, here we go with this launch. I did turn down the, the volume of the game in the recording, but I don't know if it's going to be good enough or not. We'll see. So SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. And launch. Okay, J2 ignition. Oh, it failed. Well, we were past max Q in this case. People said, well, it's going through max Q, you can't ignite it. Uh, we were past max Q this time. I'm not entirely sure why you can't ignite an engine at max Q, but apparently not. Uh, I don't know what the basis of that is, actually. Nope, no clue. Yeah, it's all gonna go awry. Not entirely sure what happened there actually. Well, um, it says it's okay actually, but no ignitions remaining. How did we get through five ignitions there? In fact, there's T-Tab for one more here. 
Why don't we, maybe it was the wrong version. No, it's already 58. Five ignitions, right? And each ignition is 0.5 TTEB. I only tried one ignition. And it says it's all right. Not that I could have done anything with this anyway, but I'm just saying. This is rather suspicious, isn't it? All right, let's just proceed with dealing with the other contracts. Okay, we have a station alpha launch and we have full data units on the RD-53 now. That's the engine on the first stage of Proton. We don't have full data units on the upper stage of Proton, RD-0210. But mean time before failure is 41 minutes, so maybe it'll be okay. It's interesting that that's, you know, a higher mean time. Well, then again, the solid fuel separation motors only last for three seconds, so... How often are they going to actually fail? Anyway, um, yes, and Valiant D will be the ship to dock with this to bring the Kerbals up if it's successful. All right, ignition. And launch. So yeah, this is the rocket that will cause trouble for me to shout over anything with the Proton engines. The Proton engines, I think, are the loudest ones. We haven't really done much with the NK-15 slash NK-33 yet, though. Those might be louder. We lost one engine again. Uh, well, it's already... Well, yeah. Somebody mentioned having the opposite engine up, but, you know... That's if we could do, let's see. But now we've got a long burn time, so the others are probably going to fail. On the bright side, we did launch it pretty steeply, but I don't think we're going to have enough Delta V. The second stage has a pretty good thrust weight ratio initially, so that's not a problem. I did pack a little bit of extra, and the station is supposed to complete orbit anyway. This got Gemini lander engines on it. Oh, we are past the rate of burn time. But I think they're gonna make this part of the burn, so we have a chance. These are supposed to go here. Oh well. Okay, that engine ignited. So now it's up to this little guy. The fairing just protecting the docking port and all. And it's the avionics unit. Well, miraculously that stage completed its burn. Let's see. If I got anything wrong here, well, the little Gemini lander engines have ignited. Let's get the solar panels out, but it looks like we are in business. It's just a hitchhiker cam, basically. Not too much else going on here. But that should be enough. Okay, we are in orbit, but let's put it into a more proper orbit. And still want to correct inclination. We're trying to line up with the moon as far as the inclination is concerned. Okay, let me see what I can do to fix the inclination right now. And finally, it's all good. Let's construct the Valiant D for docking and bring it up here. Oh dear, this still uses the messed up fairings with the bad shaders, which I don't know why they exist. But anyway, let's target our station, such as it is. I think that's that's supposed to be it, but it's... Um, I can click on that one. I can click on that one. I can click on that stuff. But it's not really letting me click on the station. 
line, lining the station up with the moon helps because I can just get into that orbit first, but this is weird, right? I mean, why should... The one thing that we want to actually target is the one thing we can't. Okay, well, unfortunately, these two ha will be on the pad. They're uh, newbies. A pilot and an engineer. No stars yet. Aruki and Lauki. Fortunately, we are using reliable engines here. We've got the H1s, which are very good. The LR-105, which is very good. And then the AJ-10 Advanced on the service module. Well, the station isn't exactly in line with the moon. It's one degree off, but we can deal with that. Okay, throttle up, SAS is on. Assuming we can ever target the station. If I can't target the station at all, that could be tricky. Um, but I guess I'll get this into orbit first and then figure it out. This would have been a good time for haystack plug-in. Oh well. Okay, ignition. And launch. I've got to remember to turn off one of the pairs of engines once we get to high g-forces. Well, looking good. Okay, shutting down two engines to limit G-forces. Okay, so... Okay, LR-105, not 109, 105. Okay, we are finishing up the orbital burn, but we still haven't targeted our target yet, so... Um, well, fortunately, we have a lot of fuel available to do corrections, but this isn't great. Okay, 205 by 168, 169 maybe. Alright, come on, separation. Ooh, a little bit of a bump. Oh, <gasps> uh oh. We have a serious problem. Why is that? Why did that separate? Oh, things were not on the right node. Oh dear. Um. Well, we can't dock to the station, but we can get them to the station, and they'll need to be rescued. It looks like. I think. Ah, uh, yeah. I have no idea how I managed this. That took some talent right there. <laughs> okay, I did not see that coming. Yeah, so they'll just have to EVA out to the station. But it's been an interesting time with not being able to target the station at all. So I'm going to go back to the tracking station after getting this all set up. And then we'll see. Fortunately, 10 days worth of food, water, and oxygen, so, you know... Even if we take our time rendezvousing, it should be okay. And we do have a backup propulsion system with these two kilonewton thrusters. That's nice. Just in case the AJ-10 Advanced has some sort of issue, but it doesn't have a test flight configuration. Okay, it's very finicky, but I can set a target like that. Uh, only this uh, one little point right there. If I hover over any other part of it, it doesn't want to select it. I think it has to do with the fact that it has the target box around it. Anyway, but uh, we can do that. Relative inclination is actually not bad. Uh, so we'll just try and catch up. Technically it's behind us, but I think it'd be best to just uh, stay in the lower orbit and catch up like this. We did also lose the, whatchamacallit, the fuel cells though, I think. But we, we're recharging right now. No, it's not going to be enough. So we're going to have to make a very quick rendezvous. Should have just put the fuel cells on here instead of something that would accidentally get separated. We have the fuel cell fuel here. This is actually underfueled. This tank is empty. 
It's just this much. So just looking to cut the distance to target in half will do the trick. That's good, one kilometer, 57.4 meters per second here, and then another 678 once we get there. Should be possible, so let's do that. Now let me check, we have an avionics unit here, so we could probably deorbit this pod. Just to get rid of the space junk. Okay, we continue to approach, but let's review what the contract actually required. Um, rendezvous with it. Keep at least two crew members aboard for why it's started the countdown. I have no idea, but and then we have to bring them home. I was just checking the bring them home bit. It's still counting down the station, actually. Anyway. Let's see. I confess the thruster arrangement on here is... Oh, it's probably because we're out of fuel up there. Because we lost the upper fuel tank. And we can't transfer fuel across the heat shield. Hmm. Well, anyway, the, the nose tank should not, you know, be removed in the first place, so... It's just one of those things, I suppose. This is not a good representation of how the craft should operate with its RCS. Okay, drifting towards it now, and we'll try and kill velocity precisely. But most important is to have this drifting away from the station while we conduct EVA operations. Okay. Uh, we'll send the engineer out first. That seems fair. Let's hope there's a way to get in. I mean, I presume that this is like the hitchhiker storage containers. Generally a thing you want to check out before you EVA, of course. But, yep. Okay, and board. Got a little bit unbalanced when... Uh, Lauki grabbed on, but it's okay. Next. Okay, well, they are on board. Electric charge is fine. And we have about 88 days. 88 days to get them back home. I should queue up a vessel that's better than the current... Uh, Valiant D, but let's deorbit this guy. We still have connection. And fortunately, it does have automated controllability. So we can just send an automated one of these up to the station as long as, of course, things are properly configured in stage. All right, deorbiting. That'll do. And let's check that everything is okay here. Well, it's got a countdown going. Basically, we just need to do the return home safely after those 30 days. All right, let me get a reworked Valiant D queued up, and then we'll see about our Hammond launches. Oh, great. I was time warping to complete the Hammond lander, and it turns out that we had an SOI change with the Gotron, but Kerbal Alarm Clock didn't stop it in time. The time warp, I mean. So we might be like right past the periapsis at Mars. I wish when they said they'd take us out. Well, uh, nope, yeah, we're past. Gosh darn it. Yeah. <laughs> We slung right past our periapsis because it didn't take me out of time warp in time. I need to be more careful about that. But the problem is that the Kerbal construction time uh, warp to complete, right? Uh, this warp to complete button overrides Kerbal alarm clock, or at least tries to. Kerbal alarm clock eventually takes it out of time warp and decides to ask me whether I want to jump to the ship. 
but it doesn't do that quickly enough. Anyway, this seems to have been one of those emergency Mars atmospheric probes, but we don't really need that. So it's okay. Not a big deal. Would have been a good, you know, test of the capture mechanism, but it's not like we had parachutes and we didn't have much fuel to deliver as, uh, you know, if it was a uh, depot of some sort. So yeah, not a huge loss in this case. Let's just proceed with the Hammond lander test. And what we're going to do is we're just going to get into orbit around the moon. And then the actual Hammond spacecraft will bring a Kerbal over to dock with it. And then if that all works out, then the lander is going to land that Kerbal on the moon. But we might want to test the lander first, like uncrewed before actually committing to put a Kerbal in for the landing. I don't know, we'll see. But first things first, we have to get it over to the moon and then we'll decide. Okay, well the Hammond lander is rolling out, but we have this probe to take care of. And I believe this one is an important one. The Piper 2A, is it? Uh, nope, it's going for Mars. I was thinking it was gonna go for Venus and we have this Venus Atmospheric Probe contract and it occurs to me maybe, oops wrong thing, maybe we're gonna fail that because oh no that's the window okay okay no we still have a chance alright so this one is not an important one but we'll see if we can get some science from it anyway we're just gonna dip it into the atmosphere of Mars and hope for the best the Hammond lander is going to take seven days to roll out. I'm just going to go ahead and arm the parachutes now. Hopefully there's nothing I forgot about this. Okay, ignition. I think this will be good for communications or not. Um... Maybe, maybe. It's a definite maybe. Okay, let's get closer to Mars. I should check whether science is action grouped. Apparently not. Oh no, it is, it is. I think ultimately this is only going to matter if we make it to the surface. Okay, we are still connected. Let's dump the stage. And get things situated while we still can. I don't know if 50 kilometers is going to be low enough to guarantee a descent. Hmm. I also don't know where Smart ASS is trying to point right now. Apparently the thrusters are not placed very well. We do have a lot of velocity here, so it might be that we just skip out, which will be a shame. We are still connected, so let me transmit some information here. Yeah, that's good science. Wow, look at that. But not of all of our instruments can be done in the atmosphere, unfortunately. Still, that's sort of important because I think we've run out of technologies that we are researching right now. So we need to visit the tech tree anyway. Currently it is March 30th, 1968, so we are sort of running out of time on things. Oh yeah, this dish was the one that kept having problems. Oh boy. Flying. Okay, new science. Well, I guess we don't have the plasma problem. Don't know why it says below 20 kilometers. We aren't. I like the while flying over Midlands of a Mars. This that thing again. There is only one Mars. It is the Mars, in fact. Yeah, we, we're not capturing. We're going right through. Probably the previous one of these also went right through. I need to aim a lot lower, but we still have the dish, so 
I don't know if the RCS thrusters can help out here. I doubt it. I don't know, maybe. We might have a chance. Okay, yeah, we got you captured. We're not gonna come down on this round, but it looks like our periapsis side is good for communications, so upper atmosphere of major craters. Okay, that's not, no, those aren't new, all right. So this has so far been a highly successful Mars atmospheric probe. I feel comfortable about 50 kilometers. And after capturing, I don't really care if we go down on this go around or on the next one. We still have a fair amount of time until the Hammond lander is actually at the launch pad. Okay. Um, looking good for coming straight down now. Over Olympus Mons, it says. And how's the science around here? Science is available. Yeah, this little atmospheric lander-ish thing has definitely accumulated some good science. So it says we're over Olympus Mons. But there seems to be a whole lot of Olympus Mons on Mars. Um, since Olympus Mons is there, <laughs> that's actually Olympus Mons. What the heck this down here has to do with Olympus Mons, I have no idea. They need to redo the biomes of Mars. Why is, why is there Olympus Mons down here when it's supposed to be there? That's Olympus Mons. Oh, we've got parachutes, I think. Well, yeah, yeah, we've got parachutes. Okay, well... Parachute deployment brings us to 9.4 meters per second. I think we've already done the science here, yeah. So we're just waiting for a landing. 9 meters per second makes it tempting to separate the heat shield, but I don't want to risk it. Oh, oh no, it bounced! Uh, please, parachutes, help us. Okay, don't hurt the... don't hurt the dish, don't hurt the dish. I don't... Uh, these parachutes... I need to, like, action group the... Um, cut shoot thing. I don't know if this helps or not, but maybe it hurts. I don't know. I suspect it's because of the shoots, but I might be wrong. I mean, there is a slope here. Maybe it's the heat shield. Okay, well, we can do signs from here. Rolling though we might be. Olympus Mons is famously big in area. This isn't Olympus Mons, but it is a hill of some sort. Did they use Olympus Mons to represent all mountainous regions of Mars? Is that how it goes? 72 signs for a temperature scan, but we only we got like a fifth of that for the visible imaging. Interesting. Definitely pack those thermometers. Okay, it seems to be circling now. Okay, 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 okay. It has stopped. It is safe-ish. Um, we want it to get power. Oh, wait, it's rolling again. Um, I don't know if this is... This is probably going to hurt the solar panels. Oh, God. Why did it have to start rolling again? Um, oh, oh, safe. Okay, extend that one too. And with that, it should be power balanced. Not that it's gonna do anything useful, but just on principle, we like our things to survive if we can manage it. So during time warp, it will be powered. So all is well. Okay, back to Space Center. Okay, that actually took longer than I thought, and so I'm going to save the Hammond Lander and other Hammond business for next time. Also rescuing our Kerbals from that space station, though they are fulfilling the contract. But basically the next Valiant D, the one with the fixes, will be complete in about 30 days, which will be fine. They are clocking their time up there. I don't know if it actually shows that here. It, does. uh, it doesn't. We'll have to visit them again to see 
But by the time that's built, their time should be up and we can bring them back. But yeah, Hammond lander first next time. That can just sit in orbit around the moon until we need to do something with it. Alright, so look forward to that in the next episode. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.